Welcome to another video. We are back and in this video, I'm going to show you how to implement push notifications on your iOS app. So like always, I have a demo ready and I want to just show you the end result. What we want to implement at the end of this video is an API call that will let you send a notification to a target phone like this is what happens when you run this remote notification API, you get a notification on a device that you set. So we're gonna start doing this with a brand new app. Here's a brand new iOS app. And the first step would be to create an app delegate in case you haven't already. So to do that, just create a new file, call it app delegate. A simple app delegate template will look just like this. This gets executed as soon as the app launches. Then you want to attach that app delegate to your main app like this in the main file. Now for the notifications related part, go back to your app delegate, import user notification, and then here import the class for that. UN user notification center, sorry, UN user notification center delegate. Now and here inside did finish launching with option, you want to include these two lines. You and user notifications that are delegate current delegates equals self and register for remote notification. That's one. This registers the app for remote notifications. Now here you're going to implement the method that's going to get the device token value that you will use for the notifications API call that I showed at the beginning of this video. It will be this one did register for remote notifications with device token. Where'd it go? I could never get it with these. It's suggested, but it doesn't tell you how to accept it. Here it is. Here's where you're gonna receive your device token. You need to get that token, convert it to a proper string like this, and then we print it out as soon as the token is uh, retrieved. And that happens after the user gives the app the permission to send remote notification. Lastly, we need to create a method that handles the failures. And it would be this one, did fail to register for remote notification error. To apply with the prediction, you just hit tap on your keyboard. Okay, that's it at app delegate for now. Now you need to go to your content view. Again, here, import user notification. Then here, you need to create a method that requests notification permissions. The predictive capability of Xcode is actually pretty great. This is exactly the code that we want to do. You and user notification center, current request authorization. And then here it's going to tell you whether the permission is granted or denied. Now you need to call this as soon as the app renders here in your content view, just do in, in it. And you call that method just like this. Now let's try that out in our phone. running and then it will say this and then the user hits allow allow and when you hit allow in your xcode console here you'll see that the device token is retrieved and this is the value that you're going to use to tell apple where to send the remote notification actually there's one more thing that we need to do in the app which is we need to go which is to go to the app target here, click on capability under signing and capabilities and do push notifications and make sure that is added that capability is added to your app like this. So make sure to do that. So we're done with the app side for now. Now let's go work on our, on our server side. So first thing I need to implement is I need to send this to my server. Imagine I have a, a database of different users, my customers or whatever. And what I would do is I would take this token and associate it with the user in my database. So for example, this is the API that does that. I'll get the user ID and the device token as an input for the API from the mobile device like this. And then I'll store that in my database like this. In my case, I'm using Firestore to store my user data. So this would be the line of code for me. Cool, and once that's done, I'll just return a successful response. Okay, I'm just gonna test this quickly to make sure it works. This is my user's database. Imagine there's, there are no users there. I call this, 
it will write to that database. Get an error, fixed something here. Now let me try again. It should write to the database. Now, there you go. This is my user and this is his device token. Okay, now I need to implement this API call in my uh, Xcode app because I wanna, as soon as I get the device token, I wanna send it to my server. And I'm gonna do that every time the app launches and the device token is rendered to so make sure that if the user deletes the app and then installs it or gets a new phone, that I always get his late, uh, most up-to-date device token. So go to Postman. And here in Postman, you could just get a code sample for Swift. I'll just take this, go to Xcode, go to where uh, the device token is retrieved, which is here, paste the API call. Then this is hard coded. We need to fix that. For chores like that, we could get a little help from ChatGPT. This is better. My user ID, I'll leave it hard coded for the demo and then my token goes here. Now let's delete and test that in the app. Just remove this device token and we'll run the app again and see if, if as soon as the app launches and the, and the device token is retrieved, the database should update with the device token. Oh, having a problem because I'm using a local host URL here. I can fix that. I'm just gonna deploy my uh, my endpoint, which I just did, and then take this HTTPS URL and then try again with that. And database is updating, perfect. Okay, we got the device token. Now let's uh, work on sending the notification for sending the notification, we don't have to do anything in the app. We do it completely from our server right here. Now, to send the notification from your server, you need the following values. For this, it's simple. Just go to your Xcode, and then this will be just here. Copy that, paste it. For the team ID, you need to log into your developer portal. Go to your account, and just scroll down to membership details, and this will be here, team ID. Just take that, paste it here. Now you need to create a new key. For that, you need to go to keys under certificates and IDs and profiles, keys. Just click on the plus here. Just put the key name, APNs, test APN. Enable Apple push notification service. Click configure here. Select sandbox or production or sandbox production, depending on whatever you want to do here hit save and then you hit continue and then you hit register and then copy your key id that's another thing we need and download your key file and then go back to your project and drop that in your project in a safe and secure place so take this and put it here instead in the place of the question marks there you go, we got everything we need. Now, we need to create a signer for the token. For that, make sure you have the following dependencies installed. FastJWT, HTTP2, which we're gonna need to send the API calls for pushing the notifications. Path, for accessing the file in your directory. Uh, FS, also for accessing the file. And this is just for me, for my database, and this is just for course issues during development. But these are the most important ones. First step, you need to create a signer for the token like this. This is a method you import from FastJWT. Here, you need to put this algorithm. This is your key, algorithm again. The header will be your key ID and your algorithm. And because this library, FastJWT, tend to insert type in the header automatically, which will mess up the uh, JWT token for the notifications. To make sure that it doesn't do that, because I ran into that issue, make sure to include this in the, inside the header object. Type undefined. Cool? ISS team ID. Then you want to create the actual token. And you do it like this. 
take this method, create token, and you put the payload of the uh, to JWT token itself here. So this is the header, and this is the, the body of the token. Here you just put your team ID as ISS, and then the timestamp of today in seconds, not milliseconds. Then, if you want to have the same notification for all your users, you just create the message like this without customization. I'll show you how to do it with customization for your users. Now I'm going to send the notification to each one of my users. For that, in Firebase, the, my database, I'll get a snapshot of my users. It's going to get all the use, a list of all the users in my database. Here, I'll open a try-catch statement. And the first, and this is what we need to do to send the request. Again, we're going to do this using this library, HTTP2. You can't use Axios. You can't use uh, Fetch. You need to use a special type of HTTP calls called HTTP2. And only this library, as far as I know, can help you do that. So you need to use that library to create a client like this. Then catch the error like this. Uh, this is, by the way, Apple's uh, API endpoint for the sandbox push notifications. Then you, need, then you need to create the request like this. It's post. It's to this path. And we're gonna, I'll show you how to get this. This is we got earlier. And this is the token that we created. And this is the type of the push notification. There's alert. There's background. There's time sensitive. Then you would handle the response like this. It's a placeholder for the response. And then you feed in the response to that like this. And here's where you handle uh, the, uh, the output, the response in the API. When I tried this, the API doesn't return any response. So this just comes out empty. So I could just say APN request done. And that's it for me. Now, don't forget to actually send the request after sending it. And you do that like this. Body is the one that we set earlier here. Because I'm doing this for many users at once, I'm going to do this in a loop. I'm going to do this like this. Snapshot doc for each user's document. I'm going to, and then I'm going to take all of this and put it inside this loop. And then I'm going to get my device token that I saved earlier like this. What did I call it up here? Just device token. Okay, and this is what I use to tell Apple where to send the notification. When handling a lot of requests at the same time, I like to wrap it in a promise. And I do that just simply like this. Just do await, promise, all, and then I put my stuff inside. And what will this do is that instead of running each request in sequence, it will just parallelize all of it. So it will run all of them at the same time. And then after doing all that, just respond to the server. Don't forget to do that so that it doesn't time out. Okay, all good. Now, let's test this out here. This is my send promo API. Send it. Okay, no errors. And I did get the notification. Let me just remove all the personal notifications from my phone. There it is, promotional stuff. Okay, now suppose instead of sending a generic notification for all your users, what if instead you want to do a personalized notification to each user, uh, including their name? For that, you would do the following. Remember the uh, body object over here? Just take this instead. Instead of making it outside the loop, you just take this and move it inside the loop here. And instead of saying just promotional stuff, you could say special offer for you and then the name. And then you can get the name from your database like this. For me, the name is the document ID, for example. And then I'll just put this here. And then maybe I'll make it to lower so that it looks nicer. And then now it will just get the name in every iteration of the loop and add it to the parts of the body for the request. That will make it more personalized. Okay, let's try this out. Send it. And I got it. Here you go. Special offer for you, no off. And then every user will see their own name. And this is how you implement push notifications with Swift and Node.js. I hope you enjoyed the video. It was much simpler than I expected, to be honest. If you like the video, hit like, subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And as always, if you want the full source code for this project that I was showing on the video, you don't need it. You can implement this by yourself following the video. But if you want to support the channel and get that in exchange, check the Patreon link below in the description box. And see you later.